Okay, okay so I guess we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, do committee announcements. Yeah, committee yeah, reports. Yeah. So, um, those who want to get on the stack for committee, if you have a committee report, would you like to get on the stack for that committee? Or as a representative for that committee? Um, preamble. Statement. Whatever you call it. Okay. Finance is going to pass the hat. Right now, I'm um, four. And finance does have an update that I would like, that we would like to share. Uh, but we'll go ahead and have uh, Art go first. Uh, not much. Danny and I started in here yesterday getting trying to start getting this place organized so that we have it as an education center. Uh, a, a welcome center, and uh, that also be used as, for the GAs and for attendance and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to be putting a library back there, back against the wall, as soon as we find some shelves. Anybody who has books that they're not clinging to with life, uh, bring them on in. I'll be, I'm cataloging the books as they come in on a site <coughs> called uh, LibraryThing.com. <coughs> Uh, the, the name of this, the username is Occupy DSM, uh, capital O and capital DSM, and the password is Stuart Square, uh, capital S, capital S. There's not much on it right now, but I'm working. That's all. Okay. Uh, action events. Yes. Okay. We have a lot of actions coming up, and then there's also a bunch of teaching. I've been updating that board back there, that big white board. So hopefully it's as up to date as it should be. But um, some of the ones coming up tomorrow is the court date for the same group of people. Um, it starts at, we'll meet at 8 a.m. on 5th and Court. It's the parking lot across from the courthouse. And then have a couple speakers. And it's not going to happen after the last time afterwards. It's just going to be um, more of the speakers and protests. And then. Um, December 8th, Occupy Iowa City is coming into town, and we're going to protest Iowa Farm Bureau, and Terry Brandstead's going to be there. <coughs> kind of good. Um, Cedar Rapids will be here, too. Cedar Rapids will be here, too. Okay. Cedar Rapids and Iowa City will be in Des Moines. Um, on December 9th, it's our second anniversary of Occupy Des Moines, so we're going to have a little party, a fun night, and we're going to start at People's Park at, say, 5.30, and then... March here to have GA at 6, and they have a potluck here, and then there's two things that are possible afterwards. Um, we have someone working on, there's a bar called the Fremont, and they may be giving us a party room and 15% of all bar sales, so if we can do that, we're going to be doing that. If not, we're just going to have a party <coughs> here, and Aaron's volunteered to DJ. Maybe have some day, yeah. What? If we get the Fremont, he wants to bring some bands in. Oh, that'd be, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, well, it will be a fundraiser. We'll sell T-shirts and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to give us 15% of our, our, our all of our sales. I guess I should get on the stacks, but 15% yeah. um, yeah. yeah. My thought is, uh, and we also need like flyers so we can, yeah, yeah. You know, bring more people. And I'll find, I'll know if if I don't know if anybody called tonight, but I will know for 100% about that as far as Fremont and Friday because I work there on Friday, and I'll talk to the owner. Yeah, we're with Danielle C. It's on East 9th in Fremont, just right over the freeway between uh, Grand University. Kind of, um, Danielle Lyon is working on that too, so maybe you should talk to her. Yeah. Too. I talked to her last night. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, we were at the underground. Okay. Yeah. The next one is December 10th. We're going to have two events that day. It's a Saturday. The first one is the Wellmark Public Hearing, um, where you can go and speak in front of the, whoever is trying to pass this uh, rate increase, and you can tell them why you think it should not be increased. Um, so we're going to be doing that. That's at meeting at 10 at the Urbandale Public Library. And the GOP debate is at Drake that night. And it's, we're thinking probably around 5 meeting there because the doors shut at 7. Or maybe five, between 5 and 6 sometimes. <coughs> we haven't hashed out all the details. The theme is going to be a circus. It's going to be our first like political theater event. And we have some people dress up as the candidates in clown costumes or in circus attire. Having the dream leader be a baker, <laughs> leading everyone around, and lots of 
lot of other different ideas. We so haven't put that. any posting or anything out about this yet. I did one thing I posted today on Facebook was give me your ideas of how different politicians could be circus characters. Which candidate is Ron? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, have some candidates be like tightrope walkers, how they don't, don't balance well, stuff like that. So a lot of different ideas are good with that. Danielle's going to be the point person for that one. Danielle with a out the Y. And the three months have, okay, so that, that's the only one that we have here. The other one's out of past, yes. So. so there's a lot of events. If you can't remember, them, they're on Facebook, on the website, and on the board back there. And don't forget, 9 a.m. we're leaving. Oh, this yeah. Year. Oh, I can't yeah. This Saturday is our big, yeah. one of our big ones. We're going to Cedar Rapids and protesting the drones at two. If you want to come before, which we highly encourage, the first caucus, statewide caucus meeting, it's going to be at twelve thirty. So we're gonna. There's a carpool sign-up sheet right above your head over there. If you need a ride or if you can offer a ride, and we're gonna. If you want to be part of the Occupy the Interstate uh, caravan. caravan, yeah. They will meet at 9 here, leave at 9.30. We kind of all follow each other up to Cedar Rapids. So, get yeah. It's statewide. It's be statewide. We'll have, so, yeah, it's all really the occupied that everybody are going. Yeah. Where, is it outside of the factory, or like where, where is it actually going to be? It's outside of the factory that builds the drones. The address. The, the, oh, no, I didn't the, it's an old historical. It's the Cherry Building is where we're actually going to be protesting, but we're going to be meeting at 12. The address is right over there. If you can see December third, is What's anybody going to be like? Is it just going to be an empty building, or are there going to nope. actually be workers? There, there will be meetings that day. There, there, there will be having meet. There, there will be people having meetings that day in that building. 10, 10, 39 Third Street, no, Southeast Cedar there. Rapids. That's our biggest one. So we gotta then go up there because we kind of. Like All the state workers are going to be scratch their heads and they're going to scratch ours for the cockpit. Make a big test of something super obvious. And if you don't know about it, there's a lot of information on the Facebook event. They have their headquarters in West Point. Their research facility in Iowa City and their factory in Cedar Rapids. And then also on the 8th when um, Iowa City is here, we're going to... Uh, okay, the Iowa City will be here maybe the 7th and the 8th, so we're hoping on either one one of those days we'll no, actually... said the 8th. Well, yeah, but some... Yeah, okay. Let me back up. Iowa City will definitely be here on the 8th. Some Iowa City people may be coming early on the 7th, as well as Cedar Rapids people. What we're hoping to do is coordinate... Um, two actions in the time that Cedar Rapids and Iowa City are here. One definitely being the Farm Bureau Convention protest with Branstead. Another being um, protesting the Iowa Board of Economic Development who is actually taking taxpayer money, partially funding the surveillance drones facility in Cedar Rapids, if that makes any sense. So, just keep that in the back of your minds that we're, we're going to try and do a double header. Of course it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why would we be protesting if it made sense? Statement of intent. Um, we've been meeting. We haven't met since before Thanksgiving, but we met three or four times before Thanksgiving. I think we're, we're pretty much 99% of the way there. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to have something to present to GA tomorrow. I don't know if that's possible. I'm trying to. We're trying to get consensus um, on that. We're we will. We're hoping to have a statement of intent as soon as we possibly can, because we're almost there. There will be. There will probably be additional things concerning grievances or concerning goals or what have you. But the the statement of intent. The one page, you know, 200 word, whatever, we hope to have very soon. We're 99%. It's just, it's just trying to get enough people to get enough. Are you guys meeting tonight? Yes. I, no. I think we people are talking about meeting tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be possible to present tomorrow. Probably not, but we were going to try to meet again tomorrow. Mostly everybody agrees it's just hammering out specific language, sentence construction, grammar, things like that. Which is still, which is there, it's just, we need to get everybody in one place to be able to just do it, otherwise we won't go to the next Yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay, okay, so we should have Facebook, a lot of sign up class for uh, a lot and everything, but the guy that that was going to do it, is, he got a call, his mom got sent to hospice, so that's going to be delayed. So what he's going to try to do is get a, run a PowerPoint presentation when he gets time, and give us hard copies. Okay. Yeah. So the organizing, teaching has been delayed. 
taught you how to, how to lobby, how to sign up for lobby, and how to introduce bills. Finance. Uh, finance would like to announce that uh, we've got $1,200 in the kitty. Wow. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we, we've been getting some funds. We have, uh, I think we've got uh, $300 due to the law uh, button that we put on the website. I might make a recommendation to those that have access to Facebook that uh, at least one of us every day go out to Facebook and plug our website so that we can generate traffic on our website and let them know if they want to donate. I think we get a lot of activity on Facebook, but we don't get a lot of activity at our own website. And if we go out there daily, at least uh, every one of us uh, make an announcement, hey, please donate to our cause. We're trying to raise funds for fill in the blank and uh, push, the pay, uh, push the Duala button on our website. The website is OccupyDSM.org, and hopefully they'll be able to go right to it to their heart's content. I'd like to say our heart's content, but we got bottomless hearts. Right? <laughs> um, any other announcements for uh, committees? Okay, so what's our agenda? Table, table proposals. proposals. Table proposals. I haven't been here. Uh, I wasn't here Monday anybody night. Anybody have minutes from Monday night? I think Jasmine Zuer has the right away. Oh, no. <laughs> Off to another meeting, or well, you have to be here. But I was saying, I'm assuming we don't have those proposals the anyway. I know the one the peacekeeping ones are table, 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 but those people don't come back, so I said we just vote it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's table again, it's right? It's still well, table. Well, table again because evidently the, the people who are in the know on that are not here. So, um, I got new proposals. Jess Resnicek just had to run out. Um, to deal with the site for the Occupy thing. But um, she wanted me to put up there for something to talk about tomorrow, selling t-shirts online. And I guess she's got all the know-how and what to do with that. Wanted to make sure that that was up for 24 hours. Sweet. 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 Uh, proposal to yeah, that to sell t-shirts online. I guess I have a clarifying question if nobody else does. Um, she has the equipment to make these no, the t-shirts we get from Ray Gun. Okay. They okay. they front them to us basically a couple dozen of them like the batch that Clark got. He sold enough. He paid back one hundred and forty four dollars and some cents. And then what we have left, he's selling at People's tomorrow night during our fundraiser there. So I'm assuming it'll be the same thing. We'll just get them from Ray Gun and then we'll pay them back. Cool. Um, any other proposals? We so far we just physically picked them up from Ray Gun and sell them. Do you have a proposal? Nope. Oh, that I'm aware. What's next on the agenda? Open stack. Open stack. Anything you want to spend? Well, anybody else? Anybody else on? Put me on the Oh, I, no. oh, can I make one more uh, announcement Art. for John? Um, if uh, He did tell me that we Art. need another 100 Tyler. foot extension cord. Tyler. So if there's anybody Tyler. in the group that would be willing to uh, purchase a 100 foot extension cord for us, that would be great. It needs to be in the 10 to 12 gauge range yep. and 100 foot. Um, outdoor use. For outdoor use. use. What are we going to use? use it for? We need more power ran in here because. Uh, we should actually have just have those lights on the one cord there. And then we got uh, people who plug their laptops in here. We have a TV and other things plugged in here. And it needs to be on its own circuit. Did, did we get the last 100 foot one we need donated? Or did we buy that? I think we got four. We got donated. We got four donated, didn't we? Two, uh, two from uh, Marty and uh, two from uh, Renee. Or did we get, we only got two? Yeah, they each donated one. Oh, they each donated one? Okay. So, yeah, right. if, we could, if we could get a couple more, I think we'd be doing good. But right now, right. John says one. I might need to it. take one of mine back home because I got a couple jobs where I need a hundred to afford. And, I, you know, I have to go make some money. So yeah. I got, well, if we could get two, then that'd be great. If anybody would I, I have like three hundred foot cores out here. Uh, I can that tell I you, price so. range, probably going to run about what, $60, $65. Uh, I said I had Menards paper, one for forty nine dollars. Sweet, pretty good. So yeah, if 
Yeah. Forty nine. Fifty nine. Oh, if we don't right? get one in a couple days, can we buy one? Yeah. That's we shouldn't have to wait that long for donations if we've got cash in the bank. I'd like to put these, this uh, plate down here permanently that it got cut. And I'm kind of hesitant to put it down because... We might need to run more power through yeah, it. Yeah, we all want to run more power through it. We'll just have to buy more tape. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if anybody in here has that black roll of duct tape. But that special duct tape that uh, we, we have for... Securing our cores down to the concrete, they do. Did they return it to me or the that, or the kitchen tip? I'll bring one in You got the black duct tape? It's, uh, I'll get one. All right, it's special special tape. It's uh, made it's for uh, it's like called gaff tape or something like that. Gaff it's a, yeah, it's a little bit different than duct tape. It's about three or four times as sticky. Duct duct tape. Hardware store carry it or what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Did you, you, did you find some at the Home Depot yet? Yeah, we bought a roll, but... Maybe you could, we could show it to Art when we get down to GA. Yeah, all right. I'll talk to you after. Uh, where are we at? Dental stack. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're on first? Yeah. Um, somebody mentioned something about flyers, uh, which is one of the things that we're going to have in here for people. But last night, I or Monday night, I don't remember his name. He was working on a web uh, website for us. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that there were a lot of flyers that we could download. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is great, but I think we need to be careful about that before we put an Occupy Des Moines banner on any flyer. I think we need to, to go through. Well, I mean, like these are ones off of Occupy Together. Like I'm basically saving their flyers. And they're they're very generic, uh, you know. I can I can show it all all the images that I have right now. I have roughly a hundred right now, and like I'm anticipating thousands. And they're all just like free flyers for anybody to use. But what my proposal was, or what my idea was, it turned into needing a proposal was just to have a website out there that <coughs> is a template, and it has it says location. You know, you can type in city, of, you know, Occupy Des Moines. Uh, Stewart Square, location, time, date, and basically it's just plugging in your events to the bottom of all these already made flyers. Oh, okay. See. I was just concerned. I didn't know that some of them might have a particular uh, they're all political off. point of view or something like that that, that may not be with what we want to about. I try to keep them all pretty, uh, I mean, the ones that are on there right now are pretty uh, pretty appropriate for just occupying in general. Okay. We had, we, we had your folks at Taylor, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it has to wait 24 hours. That yeah, we've, we've been through the table proposals, but I think oh, we can, okay. can we get his proposal through here? Yeah. What's your oh, yeah. name? Yeah. Can we vote for consensus on Judd's Judd. Judd. proposal? I'd let Judd, to Judd use $20 for our fund. It's actually less than $20. It's like 17 something. Sure, go ahead. Clarification. <laughs> Clarification <laughs> of proposal? Yes. What is it? What's, what's, what's oh, the exact wording? Yeah, restate it. Uh, basically, uh, I need roughly $19 out of finance to buy the domain. I provide my own hosting and everything. You guys don't have to worry about that. And it's $19 a year. And this is something that occupies all over the country can use because you plug in your location, your time, your events all into the flyer. And it's just, it already, it basically just has the image already made and just plugging your information at the bottom. Something that saves I mean, that saves, I mean, that's automation on flyers right there. You can see them, what they look like before your information's already on. Uh, I guess my only concern is do we have enough for a quorum to make that decision? So we're not what here. defines a quorum? Yeah. I, I would know. definitely really say. Define, I, no. I, I, I thought there was 20 or more people had to be present in order to make a decision. But I'm not You'll sure never get a decision made. <laughs> <laughs> if people don't come. I see 20 people here, don't you? <laughs> 20 people I mean, like, really, if it has to wait, and you guys want to really make it wait, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't care. Uh, I mean, how I felt Monday night, I mean, it was a pretty strong, overwhelming, but we, they're not here, so it doesn't matter how they felt then. It's, you know, this is well, I mean, if this proposal's it. already been brought up, then we've already waited the 24 hours, so right. I right. Right. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, right. It, it got brought up Monday. opposed, they should have been here. Yeah, All, right. All those who were in favor? Uh, any disagreements? Any blocks? Motion passes? All right. Uh, so...
How do you need twenty dollars? Just cash? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just put it on like my Tyler? on my credit card, and okay. like I'll just, I'll just buy it right in front of the finance or a receipt or whatever I need to do, okay. and just to show that this is where the money really went. And it, it's less than twenty dollars. Like it was nineteen sixteen, and then I had a coupon on top of that. So. Cool. Who's next? Thank you, Kaylin. <laughs> Kaylin. Yeah, just an idea. I don't know if it has to be a proposal, but since we've had so many tent changes, maybe we should either scrap the current numbering system and renew it, or come up with another kind of way of uh, easily identifying who is using what tent, and um, whether or not it is a, a community or a group thing, or you know, if some, you know, just something like that, so that you know, in the event of an emergency, someone can easily find out where that person is and get get to the person the contact person. Because some of the tents that have numbers are gone. Yeah. And some of the others are number tags are faded or they're hit by tarps. <laughs> I know that some people have taken the, the numbers off their tents because they feel that the people here know who's staying here and they don't want um, random people knowing what tents are staying. I meant the little tags. Right, and some people like, took those off. Yeah, like the twenty. On purpose, yeah. because like, they didn't want the return <coughs> forward anymore. I mean, like I have, I still have the twenty-one tag on on mine. I just haven't taken it off. That's that's what kind. Of, that's what the number I meant, not phone number. Right, I know, and I'm and, I, and yeah, that's what I was talking okay. about. Some people took those numbers off because they didn't want random people knowing what tents they were. What's your not me, about? but I know other people did. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wondered if all the tents got moved that needed to get moved. Some of them over here now just moved a few feet. Yes. I was just going to say <coughs> that uh, why don't we just let the people who want to have their identification on their tent to be known turn that information in, and if they don't want it, that's, that's fine. There's let them know what the purpose is. And it's up to them to whether they want to do it or not, Dennis. Oh, that's true. I'm you, sorry. You, you can't go. I think I think there's everybody knows pretty much who's here at this point. I think you could approach people on an individual basis and just ask them if they want to be identified. I think whoever's in charge of that can just do that. I don't think that needs to be a huge deal. I meant like from an emer like for an emergency reason only, like for a medical emergency. If, right. if they want, if they want to give information, yeah. they can. I understand if they why. Don't, don't have yeah. to. And, and some people are willing to give their information. Other people, regardless of that, don't want their their names. I mean, I don't want to be told that you know this person has this problem, and then I end up going to the wrong tent. So that I I don't want to have to or you can't waste. Find so I mean, but you can't. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't want to have to eat clock trying to find someone who shouldn't be more easily found. Well, if someone's Coming to get you to tell you that there's a problem, they'll know where to take you back. Right. Yeah, yeah, they better. When he was here, it was only 20 tents. Right. Yeah, look, you're hurting. Yeah, I know. Rome, Rome. Okay, who else we got on this thing? Me. Tyler. Oh, and that says $20, Tyler website. Should that say Judd website? Yeah, Judd. Yeah. Sorry. You don't want $20 for a website? I was going to say, it's... I'll give you a receipt. Just hand out money. What the hell? Okay, and I'm Tyler. I'm not here every night. Um, I'm here when I can be, but I'm not at every GA. I'm sure you'll see me before. So I guess I, you know, I, I don't know if this has been discussed at all before. I don't want to open up a can of worms, but I just, I'm just curious. Has it, has it been discussed that we will be forced to leave this park? We do, yeah. we do have a Plan B committee. Uh, I'm probably the only one here that's part of that Plan B committee. And the only thing that we've really come to an agreement on is that there are other places that we can have GA. Uh, Handsome Steve has, has volunteered his garage. And he's got uh, I've been six, to his place. He's got a six-car garage. I mean, and plenty, plenty of space for for there to be GAs there. I've got a significant backyard. I mean, I could set up one of these two farms in my backyard if we needed to. Um, so we do have options with regards to where we would have our GAs, um, and then it just, it'd just be a matter of, you know, working with the city, trying to get everybody coordinated to come out here and, you know, get everything tore down and hauled out of here within a reasonable period of time. I'm sure the city would give us, uh, I'm hoping they would give us time 
to coordinate that so we wouldn't just take a bulldozer to our facilities. But um, you know, we, that's kind of that's kind of what the things have been discussed. I don't know if there's any other okay. details that you were thinking about. Well, I just building on that, I'm just asking questions. Um, and I, I guess I don't know everybody's living situation who stays at camp and if people have places to go or whatnot, but has it been considered that there might be a point where we would need to voluntarily leave the park due to inclement weather or due to one reason or another once it gets to January and there's negative 20 below the chill? And it becomes even I, a safety. I, I, I think, uh, well, right now the, the primary thing that I've been working on is to get heat and that's been kind of difficult because I think my point of contact is kind of out of the area. I haven't been able to reach it. But um, I think getting heat will be will be a huge factor in how well we deal with the 20 degree below zero uh, weather conditions. Yes. Well, I was at a group and they said, is there, would we want to look at maybe people who had RVs, like parking an RV here and hooking it up that would have heat that people could sleep in? Right, you would have to park on the street. Just not, you know, like if, if we thought we were over that, they're like, let us know and we'll see if we can. Yeah, that would be nice. Cool. I mean, kind of a it's temporary, you mean right. like an emergency situation like a really all of a sudden cold the weather drops to minus 20 degrees. People low. could be inside something heated. Right, right, I agree. Um, I just know, you know, uh, we're talking about leaving voluntarily without, while still having a permit. Um, those of us who are camping every night get fairly sensitive when talking about that, and we have no plans as of now to leave voluntarily. Um, and if it gets really cold, it's just getting really cold. We'll hope that none of us freeze out here, but <laughs> we're just not really planning people, on leaving. The people that are out here are dedicated to this yeah. cause. Okay. And, and, and so then, like, for, like, um, I know some of the issues where, you know, I understand other people in the movement are afraid, possibly for our well-being. But and, and taking that in consideration, and, and very, I understand that people are, are worried about that, and, and we appreciate people um, thinking of us in that way. But we still, I think, are committed to staying. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just and once again, I'm just talking here. I'm just voicing ideas here, and I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm from Iowa. I've lived in Iowa for 28 years, and it's it gets cold. And it's this is I mean this is nothing. This is nice. This is a nice night actually. It's at 45 out. Beautiful. And, and it I won't be this way tomorrow. I, yeah, <laughs> and, and I understand it's it's a huge sacrifice to be here, and that means a lot to, to be here. But I, one thing I would I would just consider, and, and I'm not trying to you know force a, you know anything. I'm just I'm just considering. Is it possible that strategically, if we were to leave this park and redirect our efforts elsewhere instead of occupying a specific piece of ground, would that be a better strategic move? in the long run because potentially what I can see is I can see people staying here it getting to be negative 20 um, so far from what we've heard there's not going to be like a really good heat alternative at this point and once again I see a lot of people that are going to be in the cold that are going to be suffering because you're going to be so it's going to be cold you're going to be suffering it's going to be bad and I just don't know if that much it's going to take so much energy and so much endurance and so much tolerance to do that and I don't know if maybe the effort that it would take to do that is better expended in a, in, a, in a different way that would help the cause, rather than specifically to be in a certain place, rather than, you know, educate the public or do anything else. Um, and, and with that, I feel that everybody puts their effort in a, in a direction that they feel comfortable putting it in, um, and as far as suffering goes, we had a really great teaching. Um, out here had uh, talked about um, um, peaceful or you know, nonviolent resistance, and it, there's a whole section that talked about suffering in it, and um, it can be a very useful tool to get your 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 message across. Um, and and I, I mean I don't know I just think that those of us that are camping right here out out here now um, are committed to staying, and those who don't want to put any energy into supporting that. We welcome you to go to other committees, other places, or do it. You know, you don't okay. have to come down here. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of was going to say the same thing she did. But it's, these individuals, I don't camp down here. But I know these guys, 
and I don't care what plans you make, they're not moving. <laughs> so I, I think it's, you know, we're just spinning our wheels to make plans for, for other people. I think yeah, that's why we, well, I don't want to step up. Well, and, and I would agree, agree with that. We don't need to make plans for other people. Uh, each one of us needs to make our own plan in, in accordance with what we're able to do. If I were if I were able to come out here and camp out, uh, believe me, I would be out here myself. My body doesn't allow me to do that, so it's not something that's, that's a, an option for me. But So I put my in other places instead, and but uh, uh, I do agree that uh, sometimes suffering. Buddha said it 2,500 years ago. Life is suffering. Uh, it's it's uh, a reality that uh, uh, we're going to suffer. It's it's not whether or not we're going to. It's how we're going to endure it. That's the point. And sometimes if you endure it with integrity and with conviction and with uh, things of that nature. That it means something, and it sends a greater message than any billboards or or uh, protesting on the street or whatever could ever do. So, uh, you know, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's kind of uh, seconding all three of the opinions that were just stated. I, I think our primary objective for those that don't camp is to support those that do. First and foremost, we have to stand in solidarity with those who have chosen. I don't care if there's one camp around here, 6, 12, 15, or 20. We we stand in solidarity with those who are choosing to camp, uh, even though I can't camp. The same thing, I have health issues that don't prevent me. If it was summertime, it would be different. If it was wintertime, I, I just I couldn't, I couldn't camp. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't all have to. Contribute with regards to suffering. I mean, you know, I might want to sleep in until noon. I'm unemployed. I could do that if I wanted to, but I don't. I choose to come out here, and help out, and support the movement. I know I can't sleep. I mean, I know I can't stay out here. I could sleep. I could sleep easy. Uh, I know I, I can't sleep out here, but at least I can do is come out here and be a help to John and Julie and whoever else needs my help to be here to support the movement. And until the day comes that nobody wants to stay in a campground, not even one person. Well, then maybe that's the time we should have that conversation. Okay. Uh, and and well, we we'll, we'll probably have to have that conversation in the event we ever get a victim. But I know the people that we got that are camping here, Julie, John, everybody that's sleeping here, Kaylin, it's huge. They're, they're all going to, I mean, the troopers and the cops are going to have to take their cold, their cold, dead carcasses out of this, box, out of this campground before they'll ever leave it. They'll risk going to jail or whatever it takes. They, they won't care. They won't care. That's how dedicated they are. Okay, well then, I mean, I, I understand that I'm not proposing anything, I'm just I'm just talking about ideas. So I, it seems like it's been discussed, and I've not been there for those conversations. Yeah, it, had, it, had, guess, it was brought yeah. up probably, uh, say, three weeks ago, maybe. Okay. And, I, and I would just emphasize my personal belief that it's huge to be here. It's it's good to show people that we're here. It's good to show that, that people care this much to be in this location, in a public place, to get that attention. But I also want to emphasize that should we be forced to leave this place for one reason or another, that, that that does not constitute defeat. No. It, it, oh, no. Oh, no. This movement is going to know. We have pushed out of the park. We went through that when we get kicked out of people's park. In some fashion or another, this movement will continue. Yes. And we'll just get stronger and stronger and stronger. Space is the only thing that you occupy. It's your heart and your mind. Right. And when you occupy those things, you occupy the life. Occupation is. Uh, I could go. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any, who else we got on the staff up there? Nobody. Nobody. I'm going to put lots of verbal twinkles to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume that uh, as soon as our permit doesn't get renewed, we should expect eviction within 48 hours. Yeah. Uh, what is I feel like that would be a safe assumption. What was that? Every, new and every, every Thursday. Every Friday. I thought it was, I think it's every Thursday. Every yeah. Thursday, then it's in effect what Friday? Friday. Yeah. So I'm assuming we might get away with like one day of trespassing um, to get everything off camp. But well, um, and then you know, somebody said something about filing an injunction. We right. We could always file an injunction with the American Civil Liberties Union. Yeah, they said that might buy us a week. 
and so that gives us a little bit more time to tear down. That they're not going to be able to force us right out right away. But I still have a feeling that from that last day of, uh, of, uh, of the movement, Julie and John and, and Clark and Kaylin, they're all going to be sitting right there in the waiting to get arrested. <laughs> I'm sitting on the stone at the end of the sidewalk down there that says this park is for the people to use. They're donated from Joseph Stewart for the people to use. That's where I'll be sitting. Sweet. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are aware. I think Julie was the one who brought this to my attention. Uh, and I don't know who brought it to hers, but I guess evidently this was the site uh, for the Des Moines area. I'm not so certain if it wasn't for the Iowa area uh, or the American Civil Liberties Movement has been kind of commemorated. And I guess there's plaques all over the uh, campground. All over the well, city. Edna Griffin Bridge is right over there. Um, I do know that uh, when you file it, I, just because I was did all the stuff with Oak Cedar Rapids through their eviction, um, that the when the ACLU files an injunction up there, um, we got it filed and they had a court date for the next Monday afternoon. But in that window, um, they could, the city could still come and clear them out. Only if they won their injunction, then they could face a monetary suit for any damages. So uh, even in that injunction period, that's not a guarantee. That it's we not a guarantee be. that you're not. So I mean, we might, they're, we might they're have like Cedar Rapids. They decided to abide by the injunction and wait till the hearing. You know, just so there wasn't any gray area. But they still had every right to come in. So we might have 24 hours. We so might have 48 like hours if we're lucky. Yeah. We've had a good relationship think, with the, the city. The people with yeah, the guns can yeah. do whatever the they want. Just, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. The Associated Press last week said. Occupied Des Moines was one of the only occupies in the country that was saving the city money. <laughs> because they don't have to come shovel the sidewalks, they don't have to come clean the park, it's already taken care of. Are we one of the only ones that hasn't really been contested? We haven't been, we're like the only major the city night. that hasn't been kicked out. Well, I mean, but like, oh, yeah. like I mean, they kicked out everybody else in the country. All the park. Twice. We cleaned up the leaves People's in the park, too. Yeah. <laughs> we need to go do that and make a second. They talked about they don't have to have trash through. stopped by, like stuff like that. You were arrested first. Well, I yeah. mean the first no, night, but I mean night, for yeah. the yeah. ongoing, yeah. the ongoing fact that we're here and that the city doesn't seem to have any specific problem with it, is different than like every other major city where they're getting forcibly evicted. I think it's because the mayor doesn't like Brand's dad, and so it's kind of his big middle finger to Brand's dad by letting us stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we need to keep making this middle finger bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, that, well, that, well, that just makes me think then, well, what, if, if, it's, if, it can, if we can be yeah. held, if we're here because any, of just yeah. political fickleness. Is there, like, is there any other, uh, anybody else that needs to make any yeah, proposal or announcements? Because I motion that we adjourn the General Assembly. Second. Second. Yeah, the guy the camera okay. we talked about this. We want to change it. It's occupied a moment. It's the end meeting. Enjoy white camera.